Hello and welcome to the HTML Elements Overview video. Uh, what we're going to do is go ahead and take a look at each of the HTML elements uh, in this training video and kind of show you the settings that are involved for each of them. Uh, so what we'll do is, for the sake of demonstration, I'm just going to drag a bunch of grids onto the, uh, the canvas here and we'll begin to drag and drop a few of these in here so that we can go through each of, each of the settings. Um, then in a, uh, a follow-up video, what we'll do is we'll actually go ahead and build uh, an actual engagement uh, once we understand all of the uh, different settings uh, involved for each of the HTML elements. Okay, so let's just start with the paragraph. Uh, now this may sound intimidating, but it's, honestly, it's, it's very, very simple. Um, you have some settings. Uh, you'll always see this settings button um, on every single element. You'll also see the move, the delete, as well as the start time and stop time. So these two buttons here we're going to get into when we build our actual engagements. For now, let's just concentrate on the settings for each of these HTML elements. So we just simply click the, um, the settings button and you'll notice you're going to see a, uh, a, a regular robust uh, text editor. Okay, So we can adjust these if we need a little bit more room. Um, and what it's going to give us, it's, it's a, a basic uh, editor, so I'm sure we've all really seen these before and have, have used them. Um, but we can simply go ahead and start typing. Uh, we have many formats uh, uh, available for you here. Um, we have bolding, italics, text colors, background colors, uh, alignment. Um, we have different fonts that you can choose from here, a whole bunch of them. I'm sure you'll be able to find something there. Uh, font sizes as well, um, bulleted lists, uh, unordered, uh, excuse me, numbered lists. Uh, we also have the indent, indentation and decrease um, the indent. Um, you can create links. And then we also have the actual source code that you, if you're comfortable with HTML, you can go in and, and also do your, um, do your, your, your formatting there. Um, so what we have here is an ID that is not editable. Um, this is basically the specific unique ID for this particular paragraph so that we can style all of our paragraphs in a different way and they don't all have to look the same. Um, it, additionally, if you are comfortable with CSS, you can certainly put a class up here um, and we can access that. If there's a class that's already in the, uh, the page you're going to embed this in, then we can simply put that class name here and it will inherit all those styles. Maybe a little bit more advanced, but we like to have um, the simple tools as well as uh, some more advanced tools. Uh, this may be something you never use, and that's fine. You can certainly do all your styling right, right here in the editor. Um, then what we also have, and you'll notice this through all HTML uh, elements, um, so I'm going to go through it one time here uh, because it's the same for all of the elements, is basically your margins around, so your top margin, your left margin, your right margin, and your bottom margin. We also have padding, so you have your top padding, your left padding, your bottom, and your right padding. And all we do is simply enter a number in there. So it's 10, it's 10 pixels is what that would stand for. Okay, so that would actually put 10 pixels of, of space above um, or padding inside this element. Okay, um, so what we have also is a background color. Right now it is set to transparent, but you can choose a background color if you'd like um, to apply to that specific element. Uh, really, I think it really depends um, when you are creating these. Is what you know? Where is this going to be embedded? Is it in your blog, your membership site, uh, squeeze page? You know, what does that page look like? Because you really want that to fit the design, which is why we by default make everything transparent, so that you can just simply lay it uh, right over any kind of background image, background colors that you may already have existing on your site. And you don't really have to do that styling in the builder. We concentrate more on creating the engagement um, timed up with the video rather than the actual styling. But it is here and available for you. Okay, so that's uh, that's it for paragraphs. Um, images. So images we have. Uh, now again, keep in mind these are all responsive, um, so they will respond the way uh, to a mobile device, a tablet, and a desktop, um, and the you know viewport size of of what uh, your user is, is using. Uh, so the settings here are basically your image uh, URL. So you basically will uh, have an image somewhere uh, out on this on, on a site uh, somewhere, and we're going to go ahead and copy and paste that in here. That will pull that particular image in. You then can link that image. Um, so basically, right here is where you're going to put in your HTTP, uh, you know, wherever you want it to go. And we also have a targeting, so you can have a target and take over the window that it's currently in, or you can open it in a new window. Uh, you can also set widths. Now, like I say, we leave things um, responsive, and I suggest you do the same. Um, but you can certainly apply a width and a height. Um, title is for meta, uh, meta. Um, 
uh, uses. Um, so you could go ahead and put a default title on there if you would if you would like. Um, you have the IDs and the CSS class as well. So that's all for images. Okay, so let's go ahead and drag another column down here and we'll move on to the next, uh, a button. All right, so we have some settings here. Okay, so um, again, you have your styling area, which I, we've already gone through on the paragraph. So your settings for a, a button. Okay, so we have a label and we're gonna say, you know, subscribe. Oops. Subscribe now. Uh, where you would like that to go. The target you would like, like it to go. So usually new window is what uh, the majority is. And now we have some default styles. So you look at like primary, um, that's the color that it, it defaults to, success, um, info, warning, danger, as well as custom. Now custom, we'll put it as white because what that will do will default into, you can have your own text color. So you can choose whichever color you'd like. Um, and this color picker has a variety of ways to choose different, um, different types of colors. Um, so you can certainly make this whichever color you'd like. And um, that's your text, excuse me, your background is here. So yeah, that'll look quite nice. All right. Um, so now uh, we also have default sizes that you can, uh, you can apply. So you don't have to really mess around with heights and weights. Um, you can do uh, heights and widths rather. You can do large, um, you know, mini, if you want it real small and of course small and then default. All right, so you know, we'll keep it, keep it large there. Okay, so now there's a couple of other settings in here um, that we would have. So if we want to center this button, it's going to basically center it in in the uh, the column that you have it in. Um, so it, it automatically sets it to 60%. Um, you can certainly edit that and change that. Um, if you'd like it to go 100%, you would simply toggle that and it will do 100% of whatever column that you've dropped it in. Um, we have font sizes that you can change it to, so you can go 18, and you can also put some padding on, uh, you know, on this as well, which would basically push it down and make it, uh, you know, put some padding above uh, the 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 text. Okay, so uh, you can also use shadows. Uh, so if you'll notice, there is a little shadow on there. You can kind of see it over here. Uh, you can turn those off if you if you'd like, and they will have no shadow on it, um, or you can keep it on. And you can set those colors. You can set the horizontal positions, so uh, vertical positions. So if you'd rather have it on the other sides, uh, you'll notice that now it's up here. It's um, top and left rather than bottom and right. Um, so you can certainly play around with those and set shadow distances and blurs. Um, you also have your your border colors. Uh, so we'll put something really, really charming on there. And uh, you can set the thickness of that as well as the radius. Um, so you'll notice that it's now changing. The radius changed. You can see our, our nice green border on there. Um, and then that, that is it for that. So we also allow you to apply your own class as well uh, if, if, if need be. Okay. So we've got our button, our button created. So we just hit apply. And there it is. And if you notice, it fits now into that column 100%. So those are all the settings that are available for the for the button. I suggest you just play around with it, try it, just use some of the defaults. Those usually will uh, get you what you need. Okay, for the next two, the EP player and the form, I'm actually going to skip over first, and we'll come back and hit those last because there's a couple of different nuances there um, that I'd like to, to speak about. Um, so the next one we have is YouTube. So what you can do is actually have other YouTube videos um, in, in here as well. If you would like uh, another video to present itself on the page, maybe at the end of your, um, your actual engagement video, uh, you can certainly use those. The settings are extremely easy. It's basically the embed, um, the URL where of, of the location of the, the video. And you can set a custom width and height if, if you choose. Otherwise, it will just be responsive. Um, and again, you can apply any styles to it um, as, as you'd like. Now the exact same thing, and I'm actually just going to go ahead and delete that out of there. Um, Vimeo is the same uh, the same way. Uh, you can pull things from the Vimeo website. Um, just make sure you're using the appropriate ones uh, when you pull it from YouTube. Make sure you use YouTube and Vimeo from Vimeo. The settings are exactly the same. They're looking for the URL and width and height. So very simple there. Okay, I went ahead and deleted a few of these uh, columns here, so give us some room. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and drag that uh, for the next element here, which is our map element. Um, very simple to use as well. 
Um, you have a few settings here, your latitude, your longitude. Uh, you can set the zoom because uh, it really works just like uh, a Google map, which that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, you can set your width, your height, uh, otherwise it will be responsive, but you can set these widths and heights if, if you'd like. Um, so very, very simple to use. Um, and the last one that we have down here is the code. Okay, so what this is, is this basically allows you uh, to add your own HTML code. What we ask is that you do not remove this particular um, div, this particular container. Anything inside of here, you can get rid of and put whatever HTML you'd like if you're comfortable using HTML. If not, that's fine. You don't need to use this at all. Um, but if you do and you'd like to apply some of your own uh, HTML to it, then you can certainly set um, you know this to appear at some given time uh, in, in the video uh, for the engagement. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the player. I'm just going to get rid of some of these columns here to help us out, keep, keep it clean. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drag a 50-50 column here and the EP player. Okay, so there it is. Now these settings in here, uh, the, the EP player is the one difference um, from a, a lot of the other ones. So in these settings, you're allowed to then now set your form overlays and your calls to actions uh, if uh, you can set those and time those to come in at a certain time in the video. I'm gonna go just skip through that on this. I'm gonna do another separate uh, training video just on video settings because there's quite a, quite a bit here that you can do. Um, so I wanna make sure that we have enough time uh, you know, to do that uh, without making these, uh, these uh, training videos incredibly long. So I'm gonna go ahead and just leave that there. Uh, but the form is the other one that I wanted to talk about. So with the form, we have a couple of choices here. So I drag it, I drop it. We go ahead and take a look at those settings. And if you remember in the integrations video tutorial, I showed you how, um, how the integrations tie in uh, to, to this particular form. So now let's just go ahead and, and look through all the settings that we can do. So in here we have uh, this first toggle, which is tiered, uh, and the other one is going to be inline. I'm gonna show you an example of inline next. Let's just keep this as tiered for now. Um, you have a form background color that you can use by uh, you can use by default is transparent if you don't set one. Um, it, we also have a uh, label text color so we can change the color of our of our labels and I'll kind of slide this out of the way. And these are our labels: first name, last name, email address. Input background color that would be the input field here. We can change that that color. And actually, I can probably do this. Um, the input text color, uh, the color that the, the user uses when they when they actually um, type in. Um, the border, you can change the border colors as well, and also the thickness if you choose. Um, so that takes care of the actual forms. So now we have the submit button. Uh, and in here, this is exactly like the other button. The, the settings for um, the buttons are the same throughout the, the builder, so that once you know how to use it, um, you just, you'll be able to know how to use it anywhere. Um, so we can basically put some default styles on there. Um, submit, again, uh, you can just check back with the other video, um, or earlier in this video when I was reviewing the uh, HTML button over here. That's the exact same settings, and it works the exact same way. Now integration, again, um, we'll, we have raw HTML where we can copy in our code that our autoresponder gives us and then go ahead and map those fields. That will be also a separate video because uh, I'd like to concentrate um, enough on there so everybody understands that. Now raw HTML you use at your own risk. Um, the uh, code that is supplied by your, um, your autoresponder, we don't really have any control of, so we can only map out um, the few settings that we can, we can find. So it, it is a risk using those things. We suggest that you use the autoresponder. Um, so the autoresponder, again, uh, will populate this dropdown, will populate with all the integrations that you've created um, in the integration section. And so when we choose one that's actually connected, mine are not connected for testing purposes, and we'll choose our list, which will be in a dropdown menu. And then we can also toggle on and off whichever fields we would like to appear, okay? Email is always going to be required, no matter what. If you have a form, the email field is the one that is definitely going to, uh, that needs to be there. So if I want to requ require all of these, I can certainly change these labels. I can change them to whatever I would like. Um, if I just want it to be, uh, well, I guess first name is probably a, a good one, but this one maybe I just want it to, uh, let's see, email. Okay, and we can also set them to be required or not. Okay, so we'll validate when they hit submit on that form whether or not um, you know those fields are required to be filled out. So again, we have styles here as well. Okay, so we can hit apply, and then you'll see some of those uh, those took action. All right, and I actually spelled misspelled email, um, but there you go for that form. So the other one I wanted to show you 
is let's put this a hundred percent okay let's say I want the form to appear underneath and actually a good X or a good um, layout for that I'm gonna go ahead and just delete this I'm gonna leave the hundred percent here I'm gonna drag another hundred percent underneath it I'm gonna put my player up here okay so it's now a hundred percent and of course this will be responsive so it won't be this big just depends on where you're gonna embed this and this form here I'm actually going to drag and put in this column okay so if you'll notice now this is stacked like this, which if you want to leave it that way, you most certainly can. Um, but we offer uh, the tiered and the inline, okay? So now if you'll notice when I hit apply, it's now inline, so th these are next to each other, so it looks looks really nice. Uh, and at this point, this is where some of those styles come in when you start to stack some of your elements. Um, you know, we'd wanna put a, a little bit of margin in there just to make sure that it's off of, uh, yeah, see, so we move it down so it's not right on the right on the video. Um, so you see, you have a couple of different choices there, um, you know, with with the forms. So it's uh, again very very simple to use a lot of these things. It may seem overwhelming, but once you get in here and start um, creating some of your builders uh, and some of your engagements, you can really fly through these and get really creative with them. Um, it just takes a few times to go through, but just keep watching this video, and uh, you know you'll get the hang of it. Um, so basically, I'm going to stop there with the HTML events uh, or elements. Excuse me. And I'm going to go ahead and create uh, another video where we're going to go ahead and go into the actual video settings and how to create overlays and calls to actions uh, and forms that will overlay over your videos.